Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to run Pokemon Go on your laptop or PC using the Nox App Player. They recently updated the App Player to 3.7.1.0. There are a few features built in that really help us out while we're trying to play Pokemon Go on our PC, like the ability to change the speed of walking. Um, you can use WASD to move around the map. It's really simple to install, but before you do that, you need to make sure that you have virtualization on in your BIOS. You can press Control Alt Delete, go to Task Manager, Performance, and virtualization is listed here. Mine is enabled. Nox is an Android emulator and it relies heavily on virtualization to run correctly. So if that's not enabled, you may have really slow performance in Nox App Player. I will leave a few links in the description on how to enable virtualization, but it's going to be different for most laptops and PCs. So your best bet is to use Google and search on how to enable virtualization. For example, if I have an Acer 1560, I will go to Google and type in Acer 1560, how to enable virtualization. Most newer laptops and PCs will have the option to turn on virtualization in the BIOS, but you're going to need to search just to make sure that you're even able to turn on virtualization on your computer. Some CPUs do not have the ability to use virtualization, so you need to do your research before you start. Another thing is, if you run into problems, this link will be in the description. This is on Nox App Player's website. Find all answers to Pokemon Go related issues in Nox App Player. There's tons of stuff down here. If you're having a problem, it's probably listed and a fix may be here within this section. So the first thing I recommend to do before we even download Nox and the Pokemon Go APK is to turn off your automatic time. Set time automatically, turn it off. Set time zone automatically, I'm also turning this off. This is Windows 10. A lot of people are running Windows 10 if you're using Windows 8. Windows 7, it may be a bit different, and you may have to search around to see how to do this. We'll go to the top and type in location. I want to turn location off, so I'll click change. Location is now off on this device. I'll close this down. We're going to open up a browser. I use Chrome, and we're going to head over to en.bignox.com. All the links will be in the description. Download. It'll start to download and it's close to 300 megabytes. Next thing we're going to need is the latest version of Pokemon Go. Now as of making this video we have Pokemon Go 0 0.31.0. Download the APK and it will download. It should be around 60 megabytes. Not too bad. When all of this is finished downloading for you, it will be located in your downloads folder as long as that's where you have all your downloads heading. I've taken both of those and placed them in a folder on my desktop. We have the com.niaticlabs.pokemongo underscore 0.31.0 APK. And I also have my Nox set up. This is the newest Nox as of making this video. It's version 3.7.1.1. Double click. We're going to install Nox. Accept agreement needs to be checked. Press install. I'm going to close this window down here. When it's finished installing, you can click start. So Nox is up and running now. We need to install our Pokemon Go APK. We can do that very easily. There are a few ways to do it, but the way I do it and the way I recommend to do it is to go over to the sidebar, scroll down until we see APK with a little arrow above it. Click on this, I know, and we'll navigate to where we downloaded the 0.31.0 Pokemon Go application. When you find that, you can double click. It will prompt us that it's installing and it should install and show up here very shortly. Just give it some time. If you do get the allow Google to regularly check this device, click decline and Pokemon Go should show up here. It automatically launches for us. 
but we want to shut down the Nox app player before Pokemon Go starts. Click OK. We'll make sure it's shut down by going down to your taskbar. And as soon as this Nox app player disappears, you'll be ready to restart Nox. We're going to restart Nox now. I'm going to expand this window a bit so you guys can see it a little better. All right, so we need to set our location on our map. Nox has a built-in GPS spoofer, which works really well. We can go over to the side here, and where we see this little GPS pin or Google Maps pin, we'll click on that. It'll open up a map. The map is preset to Sydney, Australia. I recommend choosing somewhere close to you, if not even at the location you are now. Now the reason for this is, Niatic is soft banning people. I have heard rumor of people being permanently banned, but I'm not sure if that's true. When you're cheating, there is always a chance of getting thrown out of the game. So, set somewhere close. I never really travel 30 miles from my house. I go to my local malls and my local parks. What I'm going to do here is set a great location that I know of that's close to me. You can research good Pokemon Go locations around me on Google. When you have it typed in here, click Geocode, and it should bring you, and it should bring you to the location you typed in on the map. Now I want to start right here in the middle of this park. Now in order for me to enable this location, I need to scroll down to the bottom, and as you see, when we hover over, we get an OK marker that appears. Click OK. When I start Pokemon Go, I will now start in this location here. Exit out of your map. You can start Pokemon Go now, if you'd like. When you start Pokemon Go, you'll be presented with the Please Enter Your Birth Date screen. Now, if you do not choose 2003 or before, when we log in, we will not get the option to log in with our Gmail account. It will only show the Pokemon Trainer account. So you need to be a certain age in order to get the Gmail login on Pokemon Go. I'm going to click 2003 and submit. Here, you can sign in with your Pokemon Trainer Club or your Google account. I do recommend creating another account separate from the one you use all the time. Now I'm telling you this because there are chances that you could be banned for cheating. So I'm going to sign into a Google account. It's just like signing into an Android phone. Click Existing or New. You can create a new account if you'd like. I'm going to skip this part because I'm going to log in with a Gmail account. When you sign in, it will ask you to back up and restore. I always choose No and Communication Off also. Press Next. It's going to start Pokemon Go and you will start in the position you chose on your map. Now with the new update, you will get lots of warnings like this. Don't trespass, don't drive while playing Pokemon Go. Stuff like that. Press OK. From here, we are now playing Pokemon Go on our PC. We can control our character by pressing W, A, S, or D. If you are not able to walk with WASD, in the new update, they changed a little bit. So we're going to have to go up to the little keyboard, click on the icon. There's a GPS icon here. We'll click on that. You can drag this out if you'd like. Press save. And you can turn the opacity down so you won't be able to see the icon on screen. Or you can leave it like it is. For this demonstration, I'm going to leave it where it is. Press yes. And now the new update for Knox, the 3.7.1.0, enables us to press E to change how fast we move. So that's 10 meters a second, 25, 50, 100 meters a second. Or we can go to walking speed. I'm at walking speed. I'm going to press W to move forward. You see how slow my character's moving. I'm going to switch by pressing E, and I'll go to bike speed, which is 6 meters a second. We should move a bit faster. I'm going to test the next one, which is 10 meters. Press W. And I'll test the car speed also. 
press W. And just for this demonstration, I am going to test the jet speed also. This is 100 meters per second. Don't try this. Stay about bike speed and you should be good. I'm going to press W and see how fast we move. Okay, so it's moving pretty fast. That's it, guys. Now you can just go in, find your Pokemon, find your Pokestops. And I just spun a Pokestop there. I'm going to go and catch a Pokemon because we have one quick thing we need to do before we're able to even catch Pokemon. As soon as we see a Pokemon, we can click on them. It's going to look kind of weird for you. You can either click on the AR up here or wait for this to appear. Press yes. Now you're able to catch Pokemon in the virtual world. So in order to tell if you're banned or not, now Niotic is doing soft bans right now. Anywhere from 30 minutes to four hours that I've heard. The only way to tell that you're banned is to go to Pokestops and spin. If you do not collect anything, then you may be soft banned for a little while. Go ahead and shut the app down and just wait a bit. Wait 30 minutes to an hour and retry. If you do it correctly and you don't jump around, you should be fine and you shouldn't be banned. Um, we'll catch one more here. I'm not going to try. Okay, I will try to catch him. The other way to tell is... If you're banned, every single Pokemon will escape no matter what. So right now, I'm going to feed him a Raspberry. And I'm going to use an Ultra Ball on him. You will need to get used to using your mouse to throw the Pokeballs. It does get a little weird. I only have one Ultra Ball left. Wish me luck. And I missed him. So I'll go with a great ball. So practice a little bit before you get into using your good Pokeballs. And he broke free. So I'm going to feed him another Raspberry. And I'm going to try to catch him again. Now with this update, the ball throwing is much improved. It does work a lot better than the last version of Nox. Come on, don't escape. Yes, and we got him. So a few quick tips here. If Nox is running really slow and you have virtualization enabled, it could be one of many things. Possibly your computer is just not good enough to handle the Nox app player. But there are a few things that you can change to see if it helps. We can go up to the top here. We can go to Advanced. And you can change to Phone. 480 by 800. What this does is it lowers the resolution by a lot. And this is a good setting for really, really low-end computers. If you get stuck at the Niatic white screen while trying to start Pokemon Go, switch your graphics renderer to DirectX. The graphics won't be as crisp, but it will allow you to move past the Niatic screen. You can save changes. And you'll have to restart now, but I'm going to decide later. When I restart, my screen will be much smaller, and it'll be at a resolution of 480 by 800. If you do run into any problems and you can't run this, I suggest going to Find Answers to All Pokemon Go Related Issues in Nox App Player. The link is in the description. If you're having trouble, the answer is probably on this page. This is Big Nox website. If you need any help, leave a comment down below and I will try my hardest to get back to you as soon as possible. And guys, if you could, hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps me out. And like always, thanks for watching.